Hello, Arachne 7 and welcome back to Combat Mission Battle for Normandy. We are continuing our Scottish Quarter campaign and heading into Mission 10. So this one is called Going to Church. And because we somehow managed to pull out a win in our last battle, we are staying on veteran difficulty. And uh, as mentioned in the last one, we are now moving away from the Argyle and Southern Highlanders and we're back with the 9th Cameronians. Um, and I have updated my division icon mod, so, or signia mod I should say, so you can see the green stripes of the Cameronians are present there. Uh, but let's have a look at the forces that are disposable, uh, the map and the objective. So we've actually travelled back in time two days, so we're now back to the 27th of June, so it's I'd say two days before our previous battle is defending the Odin Bridges. Um, and we have been given three platoons from D Company of the 9th Cameroon, so 16th, 17th and 18th, as well as two troops from the Royal Tank Regiments, the 8th Group and 10th Group, which means we have six Churchills at our disposal. So each of the troops consists of a Churchill 4, uh, which is this one at the back, uh, which has got 57mm gun, and then two Churchill 6s, who have got 75mm guns. In addition, we've also been given some assistance from the scouting platoons. So we've got um, one HQ, two scouts, and three Bren carriers associated with that. Uh, and we've got the usual FO and sniper associated with our headquarters unit. In terms of off-map artillery support, we've got one um, two-tube battery of three-inch mortars. Um, and about five minutes or so into the mission, we're going to be getting access to four 25-pounders as well. So on to our objective. So we've been tasked with securing the village of Greenville. Um, within that are two specific objectives. We've got a small cluster of buildings uh, labelled Rook, and then we've got some more buildings including a church building labelled Bishop. And we have one hour in which to uh, secure those objectives. It is quite late in the day, it's ten past eight, um, so lighting may become an issue as we get towards the end of the battle. In terms of info on German um, uh, forces. Uh, we know there is some armour present as we had some armoured tanks scout the area earlier in the day and they came under fire and then retreated. In fact there's, you probably can't see the video, but there's a, the skeleton of one uh, Stuart which has been uh, destroyed. And we also know there's some infantry assisting them. We don't know how much, we don't know makeup, we don't know what kind of armour. Uh, it's all pretty vague. The intel suggests that the infantry is going to be arranged in the orchards around the town. In terms of a general plan of attack or significant features, um, it's it's actually quite an interesting map. So obviously we've got some big open expanses immediately between ourselves uh, and the edge of the town and the, or the start of the orchards. Um, if we zoom in a little bit closer, and I drop down a couple of levels, um, obviously we can see the town is dominated by these orchards. But it's also, it's it's low hedges. It's not the bocage which you, you see in a lot of um, Battle for Normandy, um, which means that there's... Uh, actually going to be reasonable sight lines through everything and not great defence for the Germans to hide behind. So I'm expecting probably to find them in foxholes uh, within the orchards uh, themselves and also hold up within the buildings. Uh, there's a lot more options in terms of where the armour might be tucked away. Um, as I said, but it's you, you, lots of these places have pretty good field of view. Yes, the orchard trees do get in the way a little bit, um, but there's no significant really obstacles kind of blocking this kind of southern section of town. Running along uh, this edge of the map, we've also got this railway cutting, um, and you do have some kind of high bocage at the end of town. So uh, this might actually give us an opportunity to move some of our forces up uh, this side, uh, provide an additional angle in towards Bishop itself. So in terms of uh, the initial plan, initial thoughts for the battle, um, well, there's a couple of things. So first, uh, I've got obviously six tanks at my disposal. Um, I'm really kind of going to break them down into two, two troops and operate them independently. My first thought is I would quite like to swing one of our tanks out to this left-hand side um, and to operate really as fire support for when we push in on the Rook. That's obviously going to be dependent on uh, ensuring that there's no anti-tank guns hiding and waiting for us. So obviously we lost one of our Churchills very early on in the campaign. Hopefully we won't make the same mistake again. Um, aside from that, obviously we've got three platoons of infantry. Uh, my initial plan is going to be to send uh, two platoons kind of uh, in towards this corner, into this field. Um, really kind of secure that for ourselves. I would then like to send one platoon along this railway cutting, using that for defence, up to uh, this position here, where they can then uh, eventually push in 
and take these buildings, which will hopefully give us a kind of base uh, which to launch an assault on Bishop. So the kind of plan is we can kind of take here either with minimal resistance or uh, supported by from uh, kind of troops having a fire base here at these uh, Le Havants or with the tank support. Uh, we can then use the troops here as a bit of a fire base to support our infantry pushing in to screw these buildings. And then of the two plumes that are sitting in this corner, one I'd like to break uh, to the left to push around an assault rook, sort of, um, supported by the tanks. Um, and then once we've kind of secured rook, that frees up the final platoon to then push in uh, kind of through these orchards towards bishop, obviously supported by the forces um, in Le Chisney. I've definitely murdered that. Um, and potentially supported by the force in Rook as well. And um, of all we've got a firm idea of one of the um, troops of Churchill's. The other one I'm going to be a little more fluid with and, and kind of move them around as and when required. There's some good opportunities for gaps in the bocage on this side. Um, potentially bringing them, uh, them all or one or two up here to just kind of find firing positions through this gap. It's going to partly depend what we find in the way of German forces and how how dug in or how resi how uh, much resistance we get in some of these orchards and we'll, we'll kind of leverage the tanks um, as best we can. In terms of artillery support, um, so we've obviously got some mortars and we've got some 25 pounders. Uh, I'd like to kind of hold off and make any firm decision on that until we've got initial scouting reports. Um, ideally use that to, to, if we do identify some anti-tank guns, try and utilize those with some artillery, um, or at very least disable them long enough to bring in the tanks and put some direct fire on. Other than that, um, I will look to give FO up as part of this team, um, as, as these buildings do provide a good overview uh, into both Bishop and Tawannis into Rook as well, uh, potentially for calling down some of the 25 pounders. Depends how quickly we can get in there. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be really seeing those hard points we want to crack and then bringing my artillery down there. Um, yeah, in terms of, of features, there's nothing, as I said, particularly stands out with the obviously one exception of the church tower, which as you can see has been destroyed. Uh, and there's our, our destroyed Stuart I mentioned earlier. Um, however, that's obviously a great vantage point for Germans, fantastic for both sniping and for an FO calling down artillery. So uh, I'm going to be sure to fire a few shells in there as soon as possible, just in case. Um, and that probably about it. Um, nothing particularly fancy or exciting, it's just going to be a, a hopefully methodical case of establishing a firebase and manoeuvring some infantry secure position, uh, rinse and repeat. So in uh, initial immediate moves, uh, I'm going to take one of the scouts in their brain carrier, push them all the way along uh, to the edge of this field at the back, and then I'm going to dismount the scouts and have them head up uh, into this position here to get some scouting of German lines. Uh, the second scout in his brain carrier, I'm going to drive along this railway line uh, and pop up to do some scouting on this side. And then I've broken off a scout team from uh, 17 platoon, and I'm going to use him as my initial scout um, up towards uh, this field uh, to see what resistance we get and what we how we get best leverage kind of cracking that before we push the majority of our platoons across. I would like to probably establish a platoon up against this uh, hedge as a uh, as a bit of a fire base if required. I mean uh, it must be said though hedges give very little uh, cover. They offer some concealment but very little cover nowhere um, close to what you get from the likes of a bocage so um, definitely dangerous having your guys kind of engaging the firefight behind it. But on the plus side that's all the Germans really have as well so hopefully we can uh, leverage our superior firepower if we do get in that kind of like for like exchange. And I think that's about it for the for the kind of kickoff. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, as I usually do in this scenario, uh, we'll cut away and I'll spend however long it takes kind of getting my scouts into position. And once we actually get kind of first contact with the enemy, then I'll bring you guys back in and we can discuss what we found. So I will catch you then. Okay, so it took me, was that just over, just for three minutes before we got our first uh, contact with the enemy. You'll see here. Um, and even then it wasn't a firm contact. Just a spray of machine gun fire. Oh, possibly from this house. Pretty inaccurate, it's pretty long range, so I'm not surprised. Doesn't trouble these guys in the slightest, thankfully. And they get into their final position without much uh 
much concern. But yeah, probably a German position. Uh, potentially along this hedge, but I think more likely hold up in here. Do you like to be in their buildings? The other um, interesting thing we did just at the very end of this minute, which should pop up any sec now, uh, was the first first hint of where we might find some of the German vehicles. Um, and there you go. We get some engine noises from back here. So it's our first indication that, hey, this might be a, a vehicle. And that's it. But apart from that, it's been it's been pretty quiet. So see, we've got our, our scout hold up here. That's where I want him to stay. Uh, we can just jump into the command phase uh, for the immediate future. Um, really, f uh, his first role, find him if you get any AT guns. And if not, if tanks can kind of operate a bit more freely, and I'll put some shells in that building. Um, in terms of other scouts, I've got my sniper team just pushing up into here and hopefully staying alive as I have a pretty poor track record with snipers. Um, these guys are still heading up the uh, the railway line that seems to slow down the movement of the carrier, which is, I suppose, fair enough. It's a pretty rough surface. Uh, I mean, while we're slowly advancing our, here, our infantry are breaking off scouts, but no no issues thus far, no sparring of fire, no indication the Germans are holding any positions in this field. Um, but I still will, um, will kind of take my time to slowly advance. Uh, okay, so what I'll probably do now is do another cutaway. Um, I'll go for a couple of minutes. Um, and we really just give probably run for at least another two minutes give them time to settle in and, and have a scan about and if we're still seeing nothing uh, in the way of threats then I will roll my Churchill's here over in this direction and start maybe uh, applying some uh, applying some pressure where we can okay that's another two minutes have passed um, we're not getting any sights or any contact along here um, so I'm going to then take the decision to move out my, my, my church shielded position. Um, initially swinging the one of the 75s in down this avenue where we received the fire from. That will give them the opportunity to put around in, in the house put, and also put around in the church tower. I'll move the other 75 onto the road and the 57 will come in behind the church of four. Um, I'm probably also going to move this brain carrier out into a slightly exposed position. Just as a double check, there isn't any AT assets kicking around because I'd rather lose that um, than for my Churchill to start taking the hits. Um, meanwhile, our scout's just about in position up on this right hand flank. Um, I was tempted, so I've got two choices here. I can either bring them up and start them to scout directly in front of these houses, um, which I thought was potentially a little bit risky because he is pretty isolated. So, my. And also, I, I could do that with some of the detached scouts from my infantry when the infantry get up here. So what I'm actually doing is push them all the way up to the end here, and initially get them into this position. He's actually got a pretty good line of sight into the backs of the Germans. And just see what we can see in terms of uh, potentially some mortar support, or infantry, or HQ support. Not sure, maybe nothing, but I thought it'd be, it was worth, uh, worth the risk. Or not the risk, but worth the effort, I should say. Um, that's great. Well, let's hit the big red button. And maybe you guys can stay with us for this one, just to see if we get any initial responses. Although it's probably going to be... I had you in a 30 second pause. What are you moving for? There you are. I oh, know that's just a delay because the guy's in front of you. Um, yeah, sorry, I got distracted there. Um, any, uh, you know... Mass destruction of our church is probably going to be in the next minute rather than this one. One thing worth noting, the damp, the, the ground is damp, so there's, there's a risk that one of these guys just bogs down and that's kind of GG for the uh, scenario, uh, which is always uh, always a risk you're on when going over open ground. They are tracked vehicles though, which gives them a benefit, but also pretty heavy. Uh, I have also moved one of the church from this troop just onto the road, um, just to provide some support. Had a mild, mild pan out there. Okay, this is exciting. You're here for the support, the, the spot. So my scouts, scouts done good. They have made a spot on, whoop, through the trees. On hello. It looks like we have a panther, I believe. I'm not the most of fame with the entries between the various ones, but I think that is certainly the 75 mil long banner arrow you do get on the Panzer IV, but um, I think the 
with a sloping armour that's more likely to be a panther. I mean, could I could definitely go and check the manual or the unit models, but I'm not going to do that in the middle of the video. Either way, definitely a threat. Quite long range though. So, but he does have visibility there, so I suppose the challenge is if we bring a Churchill into this position, uh, are they going to see each other? I don't know. Okay, I don't think it's going to change our immediate plans though, but that's uh, it's good to know what we're up against. Well, everything else is fairly quiet. Alright, let's jump into the command phase. So, the uh, question is, do I want to change my tank orders now I know that this guy is lurking? Not necessarily. I mean, it's a great spot for my scouts to, to see that thing. I suppose it's going to be big and it's going to be making noise. I mean, I can barely see it. Granted, they have binoculars. Let's see. Let's see how good a spot this is. Uh, the uh, mouse cam movements not the most responsive when I've got my uh, screen capture. Looking. Wow. Yeah, they can see a little bit of it. To be fair. Okay. What was that? That's at twenty times zoom. question is, can I get my tanks to engage that without them getting shot? And I don't know. I don't know if I want to pick a fair fight, to be honest. Uh, but I'm going to I am gonna keep them coming round, because I think that's useful positions for it to be in. Um, even if I don't necessarily want to uh, pick a fight. I mean, we could just for the sake of argument, have a look at what your target lines are from here. Yeah. Not much of anything. Good, so we all keep them coming around in their uh, positions there. I will keep my tank just watching the road and we will keep pushing forward with our infantry guys. Again, no spots or noises or anything really from this first scout. Uh, let's get you guys to move right up to this position please and see what you can see. And once you, oh, you've got a wee bit to clear, but once you're out, move up to here. Good. Okay, well, let's maybe, uh, are we going to get in position? One of the tanks might get close, but I don't, I don't think they're going to have sight on each other. I think the vision's too blocked. I will continue to scoot you up there, hopefully out of the way. bring up here. I mean, I'm certainly not afraid of his tank with, with the force I have at my disposal, but it's around just trying to be... I'm just trying to be smart as to how I engage it. Alright, let's push that big red button. Time is marching on. I want to try at least hit the uh, 40s in this, uh, this episode. I mean, it's a heck of a distance, actually. I need to check what that is. These are old tanks. The uh, actually at this range isn't going to be great. Although I'll say that, they get one tiny sight of me and then uh, pop a shell into my side or something. Pretty quiet. And theoretically, if I move a tank close to these guys, we should share spotting information. Doesn't necessarily mean he's got a line of sight. Alright, uh, let's go command phase. One thing I do want to do, uh, since you're in this position, you've got a reasonable amount of ammo, is could you put one HE round into that, please? Just to make sure we don't have any people scouting on us, and uh, do I want to move anyone else up? 
can do. I can just continue to move our most advanced platoon forward. We ended up splitting them into their squads uh, just because they weren't they weren't sitting nicely on this uh, hedge. One of them always wanted to be an open, so I broke them down so as they would not do that. Uh, I've also had to break these guys into their detachments as well, um, because otherwise they take positions where you are pretty exposed up the high bank, uh, and I'd rather didn't do that. But that is fine. Okay. Tip one, let's uh, get our first shots off the mission. Good hits, man. Good hit indeed. Well, less accurate with machine gun, but fair enough, it's pretty far away. Oh, I was going to check the distance. We need to end. Alright, good lad. I'll get you to stop after that. Ah, uh, no, there may, that may not take. Is that an injury or just a had you selected? Just had you selected. I possibly should have given you a duration target. Because uh that's potentially four rounds you're gonna put into it now. It's a little bit of a waste. Thirty seconds would have done, two rounds. Call that good enough. Uh but at least they know the, <laughs> they know we've been business. Oh that's five rounds I've done now. Yeah, that was overkill. We've got another spot which we'll go have a look at in a moment. Okay. Uh, so other engine noise has resolved itself into a half track, which is armed with just a machine gun. Okay. But where there's one, there's likely to be more. Uh, no other spots or anything, so let's go command phase. I want you to cancel your orders. But job done, thank you very much. I also want to scoot you forward a little bit. This may be enough. Again, we're starting to live a little bit dangerously. Um, Sightlines should be okay, but you just never quite know. Just get this guy forward. I'll tell you what I should absolutely be doing, which I'm not. Uh, crucial error. Open up. Let's get your visit. Let's get your uh, spotting press on the go. Now, there's always a. Um, there's always a risk. I mean, we're at the we're at the disadvantage if we want to try and engage this guy tank on tank. Um, he is stationary, opened up. He's essentially looking to spot. We have to. If we want to get a position where we can see him, uh, generally he can see us, and therefore we have to come into his sight line where we are moving vehicle, which is here to spot. Um, generally our spotting is poorer as when we're moving. And then we uh, have to spot him and engage before he notices us. So it's not uh, it's not in our favour really to, to just kind of drive into his sight line and hope that we get the first shot off. Because that's not normally going to go in your favour. Okay, one thing I'm doing, I'm going to put a quick cut and then revise all my orders for my infantry. Get these guys continuing to push up. Um, and, yeah, continue just kind of advancing. Alright, orders in place. Let's crack on. I did, um... I've given this guy a, oh, six, six shells across his end. Ooh! Uh, first, it is a first casualty. Oh, kicking things off. I was going to say before you zoom over there, I've given this guy a target brief, briefly command. Uh, when he gets to the end of his uh, moving order, which is about there, I think, he's going to put 30 seconds worth of shots into the top story of that building where we th thought might be MG fire coming from. Right. We have become undone. Why? How? Where? Who and what? Ooh, I see not enemies. Well, uh, yeah, mines we've uh, become unstuck by. Okay. That's well, that's good to know. Won't be uh, sending anyone else up this direction. Oh, they got so close to making it. Okay. We'll have to keep an eye see if they manage to spot anything. It's a shame we lost the leader there. Noisy Churchills. Okay, off we go.
really we're looking for uh, more icons popping up or flashings or indicators that's another way to find people isn't it You're on the wrong end of their gunfire I'm not sure that one hit that was a rather easy way we can check well let's see where the next one goes that one hit okay I'm pretty happy with that I'll probably get him to put another 30 seconds worth just into the ground floor as well. We've got a reasonable amount of high explosive ammunition, so and I'm willing to uh, to spend it where I think there might be enemies. I was thinking about this tank, so we're also talking about engaging. Ideally, the, the perfect angle, well, the perfect angle, would be from behind, but we don't really have that as an option. But if there was kind of line of sight from over this direction, obviously we're getting very close to other German held territory, but actually coming in somewhere over here and trying to find sight up through all these trees, which admittedly is pretty challenging. Um, but that gives you much better because even if he does spot you, he's got to spin his turret around, which gives you, uh, gives you an opportunity to uh, fire one off. Okay, that was all. Let's go back to command phase. Um, so I'm probably not going to uh, risk really a tank duel on these guys at the moment. Uh, I want to concentrate on getting my infantry pushed up further. Uh, so the next kind of couple of minutes will be about establishing... Um, I've got one section just to establish some edge here, and then we're just going to feed the rest of this platoon up. In fact, both platoons if we can manage it, before we really push on any further. I don't want to kind of overextend myself. So what I will probably do um, is I'll cut away for a few minutes and move the guys in position. If I get any interesting spots, take some casualties or somehow get engaged in a firefight, I will of course bring you guys back and we can talk about it. So I will see you in a couple minutes. Welcome back. So a few more minutes down the road and again no really further spots. I'm just trying to get my infantry in position. I've started uh, using quick rather than just move to get some of the guys at the back pushed forward now that I'm confident this area is safe um but really surprised i haven't spotted any infantry in and around here however something did catch my eye so my tanks i see have just been sitting here doing a whole lot of nothing um and then i heard that <laughs> which uh caused me a great little panic at the time because i didn't know who was shooting thankfully it was us so good spot good shot um however as you can see the shell ricocheted up there it has hit his sloped armor and pinged away. So I 75mm and not getting the job done there. Um, unfortunately, I wonder if that's going to give him the vision to respond. There's only 7 seconds left. This could be interesting. And that's the end of the minute. Um. Okay, I'm um, actually, I'll give you a hold hunt order, I'm going to push you forward. So if he started firing, I want to try and get my other tanks in support as soon as I can. Uh, meanwhile, I don't think I need to tweak any of the movement orders over here. Um, I was looking for you chaps, yeah, I want to try and get a section set up at the forward end of this just in case there's some uh, Germans in this orchard that for whatever reason I haven't seen before I start putting the guys up against this bocage in that field. Um, just kind of scouting out that way again. And no other spots for my scouts. Again, quite surprised by that. I'll have to decide what we want to do with them, potentially push them forward again. Um, but maybe, since we're okay with all the infantry movement, maybe we're just going to watch this tank duel. Uh, pretty, pr pretty nervous. This, this seems a bit of a straight up fight, which. Who wants that? You always want to fight uneven. Okay, let's see what happens. Another bouncing shot. And of course the danger here is he, this guy can't see him when we're getting free shots and I move a target into a poorly so he can see. Come on! Can we just not penetrate this guy? Now, still going to do a heck of a amount of damage to him. Hitting his weapon mount. Hit weapon, this is good. Potentially puts out of action even if we don't penetrate. No. There's a lot of force going into shell barrel. Gonna go again? I'd love to take him out right now. That would make my life so much easier. Oh, he's turning. Go on, shot in the side. Go on. 
No. So let's have a look at what's going on here. So let's we'll play it back and see what it looks like from his side. So, um, those the no, they're not. Oh, there's there. I think. Right there. Yeah, these things were pretty well armoured. To be fair. And we are shooting the frontal armour. You know, the heaviest part. And another hit there. Okay. I think we get one more hit on the barrel. And that's when they decide. You know what, we've had enough. Oh! I'm sorry, did we just hit the end of your barrel? <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> So, um, I am 99% confident this does not have a working main gun anymore. I will be incredibly salty if it does. Um, and that probably explains why he just... Well, it doesn't necessarily explain why he's running away. If you're taking shots and you can't see enemy even running away, it's a pretty sensible thing to do. But, um, yeah, potentially neutralised the main threat of one tank there. Potentially. And then he uh, drives off into, well, not quite drives off in the distance, but attempts to drive off in the distance. Yeah, unfortunately, this guy's no sight lines, which is, let's jump into the gun phase. I'm not surprised about giving all these trees, although he had one there. Well, actually, he might, he might get sight on that and get a shot. That's exciting. Um... Okay, tell me to put a quick cut in. I'm going to double check on my infantry and make sure they're moving in the right direction. We'll come back. We'll roll this minute and see if we can't take ourselves out a, pa a panther, um, which would be a nice, exciting start to uh, to this mission. And then we'll probably have to call it a day there. But yeah, I will speak to you all in a jiffy. So I've discovered perhaps why my scouts aren't seeing anything. They're currently lying down facing off map. So I've given them a, a move order just to the same action square and hope. Hopefully they'll rearrange themselves um, and actually look out through this bocage. And um, we shall see. Uh, meanwhile, we're just about to get some more spin rounds. Uh, scouts from our first infantry up and have a look at this house. See what we can see. Because that's really the next position we want to take. Although, obviously, yeah, he would have been a pretty horrible threat to have dealt with. Uh, maybe he is. No. No, that weapon does not work. If that weapon works, I don't know. I'm going to have a rise of the CM anger. Alright, okay, let's click the button. Let's see if we can't get a kill shot. Side armor. Probably, I think this guy's got a good chance, you know. Oh, it's the way it's going, it's going, it's going. He stopped. Come on, someone make that spot. Oh, and he's away. <sighs> Never have I been so sad to see a German tank drive off. Bye bye. Okay. Ah, that wasn't the, quite the uh, wasn't quite the explosive end of the episode I was uh, I was after. But look, let's let's be sensible here. We've essentially got. Um, not quite a mission kill, but 90% of a mission kill on that Panzer. Um, yes, it's still a large armoured box with a machine gun, so definitely a threat to infantry. Um, but that's still a, a good initial victory to, to knock out his main gun, we're assuming. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, our infantry's in a pretty good place. We're starting to push up on this left-hand side of the map. We've got a kind of good control over essentially the outskirts of town. I'm slightly um, surprised that we haven't seen more Germans. We've had that one little... Uh, spit of machine gun fire. There's really been not any sight or sound of them. Um, I was expecting to find more dug in in these kind of orchards, uh, but it may be that there's just not that many of them. Um, we shall see. Uh, but I think we're yeah definitely position where next uh, episode we're going to look to um, probably push in to take these houses um, and probably push in to take this lower field as well. Because it doesn't look like there's anyone home that's really going to resist us. Um, and we'll bring our second troop 
of Churchill's round into this position uh, to support both these objectives. But look, these guys are a little bit exposed. It must be obviously the just fire they can get from the town we can't immediately respond to. So we'll have to play that bit here. But generally I think they're in a reason reasonable shape. Um, I'm also bringing over the HQ of the scout platoon. Um, as I'd quite like to push some scout across this gap. And it might have to be the HQ unit. I could always do it with the sniper. He's not doing much. Yeah, maybe I'll do it with that. Get him to bridge over. And we'll start trying to scout out about here. But all that is going to have to wait until next time. So, uh, yeah, I do hope you have enjoyed this video. As ever, um, uh, it'd be interesting to know what your thoughts are on the layer on the mission. Um, if you, yeah, if you would be doing things differently or not. Um, and, yeah, I... I will catch you all in the next one.